Okay. Uh, today we're going to uh, go further in our Internet of Things, and we're going to focus on a common paradigm in the uh, on the Internet, which is called the Internet of um, which is called the client server. Okay, and so uh, we're going to show you two applications here today uh, of a client. So in this context, the microcontroller is going to be the client in some web server, either uh, openweather.org or uh, the 445L uh, server is going to be the server. Okay, so the smart object, the Internet of Things is going to be the client. Okay, lots of stuff on the book. And uh, like I said, Yarabali taped a bunch of cool lectures. All right, so uh, this is an animation, uh, and uh, it steps through the it steps through the the process, the steps that one goes to uh, to connect up a smart object, a client over here. The clients are the um, are the embedded systems. And the server is someplace on the internet, in this case, openweathermap.org. Okay? So let's start from the beginning. We see that the, the server exists first, and it opens what's called a con socket. The con socket is a general place uh, that people in the world can connect to. It's a connection socket. You have to know two things. You have to know the HTTP. Right? You have to know the, um, the openweathermap.org, and we'll see how we translate that into an IP address. And you have to know the port number. So port at 80 is an open, uh, typical port. And so this con socket will exist here at port 80 of this IP address. Okay? So that's the first thing that has to happen. The, the server has to exist and create a con socket. And now the second thing that has to happen is the client will exist. Okay, you push the reset button, you, uh, you push the go button, you turn the power on, whatever. The client is now going to create a socket, right? And we're going to see this in the software. We're going to see it two times. We're going to see it in the uh, CC3100, and we'll see it in the ESP8266. We're going to create a, a socket, and it's through the socket that we're going to send TCP packets uh, from client to server and server to client. So uh, the, the paradigm here is uh, request and answer. Okay? And so what we're going to have is the client is going to request, okay? and that's going to be done with a, get, uh, with a get message, and then there will be a response, a formatted response to that get. Okay? So this is, again, a client server. Okay, so the, it creates a client socket. And in that client socket, we, we're going to have to specify the IP address of the server and the port into which we want to connect. Right? The, what will happen is when the, uh, when the server sees a, a, a packet into its connection socket, it's going to go, hey, somebody wants to talk to me. And so in order to separate out the millions or thousands of, uh, of, of connections uh, that could potentially all want to know the weather, it's going to create a second socket in the server called a server socket. Okay? And so when I, uh, so this server socket is going to be connected to the client socket in a paired way so that when the get message goes from client to server, it goes into the, it goes into the specific server socket over here. And in that way, the message is not intertwined, confused, separated, uh, lost. So again, the, the, the using the client socket over here, it's going to send the request uh, through this socket into that socket, and then it's going to process that request. Right? Again, it'll process that message. We will see the message. We'll have a, a bunch of fields in it. You want to know, uh, yeah, let's get the weather. Where do we want to get the weather? We want to get the weather from Austin, Texas. Okay? Or uh, when we do lab four, there will be a bunch of fields. There will be uh, who you are, where you are, and what you want to say. Okay? So there'll be, there's actually a fourth field that we won't use, but we're going to send four fields into the 445L server uh, as the, as through this client socket connected up to a server socket. Okay? So when, uh, when you do the 445L uh, uh, logging page, that's actually going to be a Google page up on, up on the Google Cloud. Okay? All right, so uh, 
you notice that in this paradigm here, when I want to know the weather, I'm going to create a client socket. Okay? I'm going to create it. I'm going to push a, um, I'm going to push a send message, which will have the word get in it. I'm going to wait for the response. I'm going to print it on the screen, and then I'm going to close this socket. Now, if you have a lot to say, you want to know the weather over and over and over and over and over, and over again, you can leave the socket open and send more messages. But in the context of 445L, you remember, you can't push a lot of packets to my, uh, to my server because it's a free server and it'll go down. So we're gonna, <coughs> we're, uh, the paradigm here is uh, you're going to push the button, okay? You're going to push the button, and that's going to send one packet rather than pushing, sending packets every 30 seconds, all right, or seven packets every 30 milliseconds, okay? So that way my server doesn't get overloaded. But as you can see, this essence of multi-threading in the server allows the server to handle multiple requests. Now, it turns out both the CC3100 and the ESP8266 could also be a server. Okay? Now, I haven't written any code for that yet, uh, so I, I'm only taking their word for it because it looks like it is from the data sheet. So the two examples that I have to show you today, the embedded object is the client. But there's nothing inherently different about the client versus the, uh, the, the server, except it takes a lot more memory, you have to do a lot more processing. Whereas, it doesn't take a lot of thought to say, what's the weather here in Austin, Texas? Okay? All right. So in, again, in the context of uh, Lab 4, we are going to open a socket when we want to know the weather, we're going to open a, well, we're going to ask for the weather, we're going to receive the weather, and we're going to close that socket. And then when it's time to push a piece of information up onto the internet, uh, we're going to open another socket. Okay, again, that's a socket to the 445L web server. Uh, push the information you want to measure, uh, get a well done, my faithful servant response, and, uh, and then we'll close that socket. Okay. Any questions on, the, on, this, on this paradigm? Like I said, I have two examples to show you, but while it's plugged in, I'm going to show you, okay, next. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump way at the end and show you what the, what the push, I don't know, the push and pull are, are actually got internet words, and so I'm going to say send data. Okay. Uh, this is what, if you, this is the TCP payload, right? This is the application layer message that I'm going to send to log data onto the 445L server. Okay? So it's going to use the word get. That's, a, uh, that's an internet word for I'm sending you some information. I want you to respond. Okay? So this is uh, from the client. This ASCII string is going to be sent uh, through a TCP packet into the 445L server. And then there's a couple of fields. Uh, have fun with the city. You know, it's nothing... It'll just look cooler on the web page if you like the city is like where you're from or where you'd like to go or where you wish Valvano would go. No, don't use any bad words. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, the, and then the, 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 the fields are separated by an and. Okay. Uh, that means you can't put and in your, in, your, in your city name. You can't use the ampersand sign. Okay. Be careful. Um, uh, then you're going to have your name, and Yerbali and I argued well over whether or not you could put a space in there. Uh, it's one of those things. That he says you can, and it didn't work for me, so I put in percent twenty whenever I wanted to have a space, just because I was lazy. And you get it to work, and you stop, you go on. Well, I put in percent percent twenty. You can see I got a percent. Uh, I put I got a percent three D in here. You see that? Uh, that happens to be the equal sign. That's the equal sign. Because I was afraid it would parse it. We see the equal sign and, and say that's something important. So, uh, But it logs an equal sign on the server, but the packet actually has a percent %3D in it. Okay, what are they getting? So there's the name again. Uh, put you and your partner's name in there. Okay. You know, it's nothing. I'm not going to actually parse it. The TA is going to look to see that you sent a pot packet up. So better put your something up there that you can say that one was mine, okay? Uh, and then the, 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 the data field of this push is any ASCII string after the greet equals, okay? So greet equals is the code that says uh, this, is a, this is a data, 
and you can format it however you want. In this case, I've measured the internal temperature of the processor. Uh, that's one of the A to D modes. You set it up in the, um, in the sequencer. Uh, there's a bit four, I think, in the sequencer. It'll measure internal temperature. And then there's a formula on the data sheet to convert the A to D value to the temperature. Okay. Um, there's one more field that, uh, that I left in there because we used it on the online class. Uh, uh, it's probably safe to leave it in there, uh, but it doesn't do anything. It's not important for, for 445L. And then there's a bunch of stuff that I don't understand, but it's there. And apparently this is the protocol, HTTP 1.1. Uh, and then uh, it likes to know who's talking, okay? And so you're an agent, okay? And you're an agent of, of Kyle, by the way, in case you. Um, it may actually check for that, so leave that one in there. Uh, and then it, it needs to know uh, inside the server, uh, inside the uh, web page, who should get the packet. And that's the name of the server here. You'll see that it'll be uh, open weather map.org for the for the um, for the open weather map. so that's the that's the packet okay uh, yeah let's show you some fun stuff click Come on. it works okay so uh, there right there at the top is the packet I received when I plugged it in so uh, I am going to hopefully it works uh, the way my code works is the uh, when I uh, I use the heartbeats here when I push the um, one of the buttons, uh, the light will change color, and then it will come back green when it's sent that packet. So did you see that? So it went off when I pushed the button, and it turned back on green when it received the weather. Okay, and so if you were up close, you can know that it's 25.66 degrees outside. I'll refresh the page here. And there's a second, you see there's a second uh, a measurement. And the processor's getting hotter, right? So the internal temperature of the processor went up from 19.8 to 21.4 degrees, okay? Uh, and um, it shows me both the internal temperature and the external temperature on my screen, okay? All right, so you close that. Okay, I showed you the map last time. Uh, this map isn't isn't real interesting because uh, it's just now this is not a map of this is not a map of of where you said you're from this is a map of where the um, where the um, IP address is okay so you can't really spoof it uh, but I showed you this one last time too this was the when Yarabali and I did this a similar lab Oops. Ah, ah, stop okay sorry Okay. When the Arabali and I did a similar lab with the uh, on the uh, edX MOOC, uh, we had come on, internet. Uh, we had a lot of people all over the world. Okay. There they are. Okay, we so saw we had a lot of people connecting into the. Of course, the Arabali had to buy a a, a real web server because we had too many hits, and, and so we know what happens when you when you when a lot of people try to access the server at the same time. All right, close that. All right. So what do we see in this first, uh, first demo? I showed you a Lab 4 running. Okay, Lab 4 running has got two parts. It, it will measure the weather. And, um, and then using socket programming, uh, we will push some data. Okay, so there's a couple of ways to get extra credit. There's a list of 19 cool things that this, that this uh, device will be. Right, you're going to go to checkout. You're going to check this out and give it back. Right, uh, and and as always in checkout, don't lose the bag. Okay, uh, again, it takes some, you know, 15 minutes to make a new bag, and if you multiply 15 minutes times $100 an hour, uh, it costs us a lot of money when you lose the bag. So don't lose the bag. So. Uh, but you, but you don't have to buy one of these unless you want to keep it. Unless you want to do this uh, next semester, so you check out your CC thirty one hundred uh, to do your lab. Okay. Uh, you, <clears throat> when I tried to combine my lab three uh, into my lab four, I ran out of space, 
So I just warn you, if you're, if you're going to try to do that option, you may want to get rid of the, the pretty picture of the clock and just have the time. Um, yeah. We are going to create for you, uh, I may not teach it, I don't know, we'll, we'll take a, but there's a process that we've established for creating a server. So, because especially if you want to do this after 445L, you want your own server. Uh, and so uh, we've done it twice, so it's, it seems like we know what we're doing. So uh, that's an extra credit thing. All right. All right, so next I'm going to show you uh, a couple of demos.